Okay, let's take a moment and check your answers. Um, so check that you match the correct sets of inequalities with the correct graphs and make sure that you shaded the correct feasible regions. Also for number nine, you wanna be looking for, did you graph your lines correctly? As well as, did you shade that triangle region there? Okay, so this is all review. We did this last week. So let's take that next step then. The question is, what is an objective function? And that is the function to be maximized or minimized in a linear programming problem. This is what makes it linear programming. There is context and something to be maximized or minimized. And the reason we go through all this work of graphing that feasible region is that maximum or minimum always occurs at one of the vertices of the feasible region. Remember, a vertice is a corner. So we have this feasible region here, okay? And we have one, two, three, four vertices. So those are four possible places that the maximum or minimum can occur. The maximum or minimum are not going to occur at any of these points inside of the feasible region. So rather than having to test all of those options, we know that we've narrowed it down to it's one of these four. That's why it's worth the time and the effort. Okay, we're going to try a couple together and then I'll have you try one on your own. Here's our first example. Yum's Bakery bakes two breads, A and B. One batch of A uses five pounds of oats and three pounds of flour. One batch of B uses two pounds of oats and three pounds of flour. The company has 180 pounds of oats and 135 pounds of flour available. Write the constraints for the problem and graph the feasible region. Well, remember, constraints are inequalities. So we'll do a couple of things to get started. Um, we have two breads, A and B. We want to define our variables. I'm going to define A as X and B as Y. Now, if I wanted to, I could keep using those in my equations or my inequalities, but at some point I am going to have to put this on a graph. So that's why I like to define my X and Y to refer to my X and Y axis. All right, sounds like the company is limited by oats and it's limited by flour. So those are our inequalities, okay? Those are our constraints. So let's start with oats. All right, so A uses five pounds of oats and B uses uh, two pounds of oats. And we have no more than 180 pounds of oats. Let's do flour next. A uses three pounds of flour and so does B. And we have no more than 135 pounds. Okay, so those are two constraints. There are two more constraints that we almost always include in a linear programming problem. Those constraints are X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is greater than or equal to zero. The reason we include those is because we need to recognize that this is a real life situation and we can't have a negative number of oats and flour. All right, we have our four constraints. Let's go ahead and graph them. I'm going to use Desmos. So I already have my graph in Desmos. You can see my solution region is bounded by these points 0, 45, 30, 15, 36, 0, and zero, zero. So to stay organized with these, um, I'm going to put them into a table, okay? Because I don't want to always have to flip back and forth. So 0, 45, 30, 15. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. Uh-oh, my iPad is freezing on me. I can see it and you cannot. All right, so I'm going to give it a minute. Let's look at the next part of the problem. 
It says Yum's Bakery wants to maximize its profit from bread sales. Nope, here we go. Okay, one batch of A yields a profit of $40, one batch of B yields a profit of $30. Use the profit information and our work from above to find how many batches. Okay, so let's write a function for that. Um, so P, I'm going to use to stand for profit. We make $40 on a batch of A, remember A, I'm using X, and we make $30 on a batch of B. Okay, so that's my function. Now, I know that that function is going to be maximized at one of these vertices. Okay, so my vertices were again 0, 45, 30, I think my problem is my going back and forth between the two apps. All right, I'm going to try restarting this one more time. And I'll probably have to use my laptop for the other ones. Oh gosh. 045, 3015, 36, 0, and 00. zero. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to substitute these values of x and y into our objective function. Okay, so 40 times 0 plus 30 times 45 equals, I'm going to grab my handy dandy TI-84 here, 30 times 45, 1350. Seems like a good profit. Let's see if they can make more. This time, 40 times 30 plus 30 times 15. Okay, let's put that one in. 40 times 30 plus 30 times 15. 1650. Oh, higher profit yet. Last one. This time we're going to put in the point 36, 0. So 40 times 36, 1440. Now, I have one more point to test. It's zero, zero. I know that's going to give me a profit of zero. If I do zero work, I earn zero money. All right, so we're done just about here, okay? Which one it gives us that maximum value? It's 3015. So that tells us that the bakery should bake 30 batches of A, and 15 batches of B. Okay, I know there were a lot of steps there, so let's go and do one more together and then I'm gonna have you try one on your own. Okay, here's our second example. Jillian is planning a green roof that will cover up to 600 square feet. She will use two types of plants, Blue Lagoon Sedum and Raspberry Red Sedum. Each Blue Lagoon Sedum will cover 1.2 square feet. Each, ras each Raspberry Red Sedum will cover 2 square feet. Each plant costs $250, and Jillian must spend less than $1,000. Write the constraints and graph the feasible region. Okay, so we've got these two plants we're working with, blue and red. So I labeled them um, that... Blue would be on my x-axis and red would be on my y. Um, so first thing that we have is square footage. Okay, so we've got the blue lagoon one, which is my x, covers 1.2 square feet. Plus we have the red raspberry one, which covers 2 square feet. And we will cover up 
to 600 square feet. So it can't be more than 600. So I have to write a less than or equal to. Now we have money. Um, each plant costs 250. Okay, that's easy. So both of them are 250. And we must spend less than $1,000. All right, and then don't forget those last two constraints. This is a real life situation. We cannot have a negative number of plants. So we need to recognize that they have to be, um, the number of plants has to be greater than or equal to zero. These are our four constraints. Let's look at a graph. I'm going to try to do it differently this time. Okay. Our graph I have in Desmos here. Let's see, I can move this out of the way. Good. Okay, I have my one, two, three, four vertices labeled. I'm going to go ahead and write them in a table right now. I suggest you do the same thing. So we have vertices, and then we'll leave room in our table to put our objective function. So 0, 300, 250, 150, 400, 0, and then 0, 0. All right, let's head back here to our word problem. Okay. So, Let's finish reading. Jillian wants her green roof to help control air pollution by absorbing carbon dioxide. Each blue lagoon sedum plant will absorb 1.4 pounds of CO2 per, per year, and each raspberry lagoon sedum plant will absorb 2.1 pounds per year. Find the number of each type of plant in order to maximize her carbon dioxide absorption. So we want to maximize carbon dioxide absorption. Um, so I'm going to write an equation. I'm going to use m for maximum. So the maximum is going to be um, the blue one is 1.4 plus um, 2.1 for the red. All right, let's go ahead and put our vertices into this function. So I will have 1.4 times 0 plus 2.1 times 300. Okay, 2.1 times 300, 630. 1.4 times 250, 2.1 times 150, 665, that's better. 1.4 times 400 plus 2.1 times 0. Oops. I typed in the wrong number. 560. And we know 0 times anything 0. All right, so which one is our maximum? It's the second one. So Jillian will get the most carbon dioxide absorption um, for the money she can spend for the amount of space she has if she plants 250 blue and um, 150 of the red. That's what Jillian should do. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video now. I will post um, this final example with its answer in Schoology. Um, and then your assignment this week is to do the practice B worksheet. Um, so do the worksheet. Um, you can write on it in Notability and then upload that to your assignment. Okay, I'll see you in class and in office hours.